Well, good morning. My name is Dr. Ben Newman. I study coronaviruses uh, for a living and for a long, long time. And I do my best to keep up to date on all the latest papers, although there's so many of them that I definitely miss a couple. Um, so let's use that to try to answer some of your questions. Yeah, this is Ask Dr. Ben. All right, uh, the next question comes in from Susan. And good morning, Susan. Uh, let's see. Dr. Ben, would you share your take on the claims of Dr. Geert van den Bosch, which I'm mispronouncing badly, but um, yeah, I believe he's a uh, Dutch scientist who has worked for some vaccine manufacturers, and oh my gosh, yeah, it's got a link to the manifesto there, and this is, um, yeah, it's like Unabomber level paranoia for people old enough to remember that. It's pretty weird, but um, yeah, I think it's coming from a uh, from a from a place of internal worry. Um, uh, and so, all right. So, what are we talking about? All right. So, there's this guy. He works in science for a little while. Uh, he was part of a group. They published some papers in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Since then, he hasn't published any papers, unless he's got one out in the last uh, couple of weeks that I haven't noticed. So when I say this, I'm going to say that he is no longer a scientist. Um, so to be a scientist, right, so here's the misconception. The idea is that you get your PhD and you are a scientist for life, and you are guaranteed to have expertise in a particular field. It's not the case. Uh, a PhD is a license to get back out there and earn your degree every single day and keep yourself up to date. Um, uh, and it gives you a better starting point than the average person for being able to do that because you've had to put in some work. But no, a PhD is a thing given for a job at a particular time. And usually that time was a long time ago. <laughs> So, yeah, <laughs> it says a person was good at something at some particular time or was good enough at something. Um, the other thing to know about PhDs is that it is fairly rare for people to not get PhDs when they go all the way through the process. The process is designed like hammering metal on an anvil <laughs> to beat a PhD student into some kind of usable shape, uh, <laughs> to, <laughs> um, to put it uh, very bluntly. Uh, and uh, it's basically seen as a waste of resources if you spend all this time and effort and money on a person and they don't get in. So they try to be really uh, careful about screening who gets to start the PhD programs, um, but then they have really high uh, rates of people that come out. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Anyway, this guy, I believe, was a PhD, um, and after he left science proper and stopped publishing and yeah T when you publish you have to like to write a paper you have to have read i don't know 40 or 50 recent papers and those are the reference section of that one and those will be the ones that you thought were relevant and were really you know on point enough to be worth mentioning you'll have had to read quite a few more so uh yeah being able to write a paper takes a lot of reading and research and is basically something like a mark of at least temporary at the time expertise so it was last an expert in something i don't know what is that 30 some years ago yeah since then he's been a project manager for uh, different vaccine companies and he's worked at quite a few of these and so i can guess though i have no evidence um, that he must be uh, reasonably good at project managing for vaccine companies now being a good project manager does not have anything to do with understanding how vaccines work necessarily. You'd need a certain degree of intuition, I think, about it. But to a larger extent, a project manager is told, this is the thing that you're going to do by, you know, their management. And the project manager is like the little middleman. It's the middle management that then tells uh, the team and keeps them on task. And, you know, we're supposed to produce this thing in this time and do these tests and then report them back up the chain of command. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, but it doesn't give him the he's, he's being sold as someone with special insider insight. And I think he has special insider insight into the project management inside major vaccine companies at which he's worked. 
and I don't think he has any particular insight outside of that. All right, so that aside, what is this manifesto? Wow, yeah, this manifesto is something else. It's got paranoia in there. It's um, got parts where he's saying, I'm, I'm just trying to get this out uh, in time, you know, to save the world, basically. Um, he knows everything bad is going to happen, and you know the 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 big people won't let him speak, but he's gonna he's gonna speak anyway, and it's it's very compelling. It's the sort of thing that you see in movies. Um, yeah, they're supposedly based on real life about whistleblowers who are just doing their best to try to save the day. Um, but in this case, the things that he's saying are. From a scientific perspective, I think nonsense or outdated. It's kind of a mix of the two. It doesn't particularly have a point other than we don't know exactly what a vaccine is going to do. And that's a powerful piece of anti-vaccine um, yeah, ammunition, if you like. Because, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen if I pick up my phone and check the messages. <laughs> yeah. But probably, having done this many times in the past, probably there's going to be no messages or one or two spams or, you know, a couple little things from people that I know. Probably it's not going to be something major, but assuming that the unknown is going to be terrible and is out to get you, um, when it's not particularly unknown, when it's actually something that's been tested quite a few times, that seems like... It's it's more paranoid than cautious, and it's more unhinged than um, based in reality. I would say, that's that's the impression that I got from. Uh, yeah, I watched little things with him and uh, listened to him. His big crowning achievement, I believe, was that he was going to speak at a world vaccine conference, which sounds big in Ohio. Now, I'm from Ohio, <laughs> but when you put your World Vaccine Conference in Ohio, I don't know, people don't usually do that. It's, it's got a whole lot smaller. World Vaccine Conference in Ohio on LinkedIn, and it's now collapsed down to, I don't know if there's a hundred people watching, but yeah, I'm, they, they may be uh, getting snacks out of the kitchen while you're talking as well. <laughs> it's, it's fine, but it's a case of overblown credentials uh, without any real understanding of what's going on behind it. And not only is he not an expert in anything current to do with the virus, as far as I can tell, he's not citing any of the recent studies that very much <laughs> pound all kinds of nails in the coffins of the dumb things he's trying to peddle. Um, there's, there's basically nothing there. Yeah, that's, um, that's the way I see it. And he's not alone. There are plenty of these people out there. Um, uh, another one, well, we'll make a video about another one because uh, I think somebody's asking about it. But uh, yeah, so I wouldn't take anything that he says at face value. He's a frightened person who doesn't really, who isn't looking at the isn't looking at the information that's right there in front of him. He's just frightened. And it's like a case of, yeah, I guess you don't know what's under the bed, but you know what? You can turn the bedside lamp on and you can check under there because it's literally right there under you. And then you know. And once you know that there's no monster under there, that all goes away and you can be more confident. That's the confidence that I get from looking at the results. When there are questions, it's usually not a unique question that only I have. It's a question that lots of people have had and continue to have. And some of those people are in a position to test it. And when they test it, the best thing you can do is have a look at what they've done. Look for the shortfalls, look for the weaknesses. But oh my gosh, yeah, look at the results too. And then as long as it looks like it's reasonably done, internalize that and that becomes your new starting point. Yeah, yeah, you can't you can't ignore things that are right in front of you in order to hold on to fear. And uh, it feels like that's what uh, he and so many others are doing. So there we go. That's for better or worse, uh, <laughs> what I think of this guy, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think much of him. All right, thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.